Welcome to the channel of NZ Justice 111. This is episode 10 in the series, The Names of Who Corrupts New Zealand and What They Don't Want You to Know. In the last episode, this channel exposed, but not limited to, two court managers Calvin Smiley and Tracy Marsh altering Ministry of Justice court records to unlawfully hide the fact that corrupt barrister Christopher Lynch had never filed his original affidavit into the court and that photocopies of this unfiled affidavit had been criminally used as evidence to obtain judgment after judgment against Lisa and Rose. In this episode, you will see Lisa and Rose be taken from District Court to the High Court by Christopher Lynch and Senior Sergeant in the most devious way. You will also hear in this episode a taped telephone conversation between Lisa and Mr. Rod Hooker, law firm partner of Valiant Hooker & Partners, which Lisa had hired to represent her and her trust. This taped conversation shockingly exposes, but not limited to, Mr. Hooker supporting Senior Sergeant and his unlawful property relationship claim filed against his own client, Lisa. Without further delay, here we go. As you saw in the last episode, a hearing had taken place in the family court before Judge Haikaka, without the knowledge of Lisa, her mother Rose, and Lisa's new lawyer, who worked for Rod Hooker's law firm. Very soon after, Lisa's lawyer found out about the hearing and what Judge Haikaka had ordered. Lisa's lawyer also found out, after receiving Lisa's files from Barrister Sandy Bailey, that Christopher Lynch, for over two years, had been hiding 13 files belonging to Lisa and her trust. On the 17th of June 2011, Lisa's lawyer contacted Christopher Lynch asking him to urgently release the 13 files that held a large number of documents needed by Lisa to copy and give Senior Sergeant, as ordered to do so by Judge Haikaka. True to form, Lynch, to help Senior Sergeant get his judgment before Lisa was able to get her files, started using delay tactics. Unfortunately for Lynch and Senior Sergeant, this did not work. Shortly after Lynch was forced to hand over Lisa's files, the family court recognised the terms of the fully signed prenup. Senior Sergeant's case against Lisa and Rose was thereafter stopped for three months, so Lisa and Senior Sergeant could, as per the terms of the prenup, attend mediation. As proof of this, here is a screenshot of Lisa's lawyer's letter to the mediator, confirming the family court proceedings had been halted for three months. After Lisa and her mother Rose narrowly escaped Senior Sergeant obtaining a malicious judgment against them, and before the mediation was to take place, Lisa's lawyer on the 24th of August 2011 sent a formal letter to Senior Sergeant requesting he hand over copies of his documents. Here is a screenshot of the most relevant part in the letter, that being a request to Senior Sergeant to hand over copies of his statements that belong to bank accounts held in his sole name. On the 4th of October 2011, Senior Sergeant gave over copies of his documents, including some of his bank statements. What Lisa and her lawyer did not know was that Senior Sergeant was criminally hiding bank statements belonging to accounts he was keeping secret. You will see, but certainly not limited to, absolute proof of this in the next episode, soon to be released, where this channel, via unequivocal evidence, will be pulling apart a 2013 judgment handed down against Lisa and Rose by High Court Judge John Presley. You may, if you watched the next episode, never trust a New Zealand court judgment again. Coming back to this episode, while Senior Sergeant was unlawfully hiding at bank accounts, Lisa was having ongoing problems with her trust BNZ internet banking facility, whereby the statements for four main accounts of the trust would not show up. Lisa phoned the Bank of New Zealand countless times to resolve this problem, but it was never resolved. However, what Bank of New Zealand representatives did was offer to post out, free of charge, bank statements required by Lisa until the technical problem to do with the trust's internet banking facility was fixed. This may appear on the surface to be a kind gesture by the bank, but all is not what it appears. Whenever copies of bank statements arrived in the post, there was a large number of them missing. This made it impossible to reconcile the accounts belonging to Lisa's trust. To make matters worse, without the technical problems of Lisa's trust internet banking facility being fixed by the BNZ, the bank started closing accounts belonging to the trust, four in total. As proof of this, here is a screenshot of the relevant part in a letter sent to Lisa and Rose by BNZ corporate lawyer Natalia King. As you will see, the letter confirms that once an account is closed, internet banking is no longer available for that account. 
Will Lisa and Rose were having major problems in obtaining copies of the trust bank statements, Senior Sergeant and Christopher Lynch were plotting their next move. What you are about to see these two corrupt individuals do takes, in NZ Justice 111's opinion, a high level of criminal planning. Here we go. In early December of 2011, Senior Sergeant and Lisa were to attend the mediation. But before this could happen, Senior Sergeant on the 30th of November and behind Lisa and her lawyer's back filed a claim against Chris Lynch into the High Court. This was done by way of a legal document called a Statement of Claim, in where Senior Sergeant was claiming off Lynch just over 224000 This being the same amount Senior Sergeant had fraudulently claimed in the Family Court that Lisa's trust owed him. Proof that this loan amount was and is fraudulent can be seen in Episode 8. And why would Senior Sergeant claim Lynch owed him this money? Put simply, Senior Sergeant claimed that Lynch had been a trustee for Lisa's trust at the same time he was his barrister. Lynch had not protected Senior Sergeant's money from Lisa's trust, so Lynch, because of his negligence, owed him the money. By Senior Sergeant filing his statement of claim against Lynch, made it falsely appear as if these two men were in a legal battle. But as you will see before this video ends, nothing could have been further from the truth. After Senior Sergeant filed his statement of claim in the High Court against Lynch, he then waited until one day before his and Lisa's mediation was to take place before contacting Lisa's lawyer and cancelling the mediation. After that had been done, cunning barrister Christopher Lynch then, on the 13th of February 2012, filed a statement of claim into the High Court against the trustees of Lisa's trust, that being Lisa and Rose, who were thereafter sent a copy of Lynch's statement of claim. Lisa and Rose thereafter learnt that Lynch wanted them to take full financial responsibility in paying Senior Sergeant and let Lynch, for lack of a better term, off the financial hook. In legal terms, this is called indemnity. As Christopher Lynch, while he was Lisa's professional trustee and after, had been so dishonest and deceitful, which had resulted in huge financial losses to Lisa and Rose and Lisa's trust, they would not agree to indemnify Lynch and on the 13th of April 2012 filed a statement of defence against him. From the time Lisa and Rose filed their statement of defence against Lynch, Ron Hooker, whose law firm Lisa had hired to defend her and her trust, kept pushing Lisa to pay Senior Sergeant. Towards the end of 2012, Ron Hooker phoned Lisa and informed her that Senior Sergeant would accept $60,000 to end all legal matters. Given Lisa's trust was still carrying a huge debt after Senior Sergeant had defrauded her trust in excess of $200,000 while in their relationship, as shown in Episode 5, Lisa refused to take Senior Sergeant's offer. While Lisa was on the phone with Rod Hooker, he became highly agitated and threatening, so Lisa picked up her dictaphone and began to record the conversation. NZ Justice 111 has chosen what this channel believes everyone should hear when it comes to Mr Hooker's legal position about corrupt Barrister Lynch and what he did when he was a professional trustee for Lisa's trust. The $60,000 Mr Hooker is telling Lisa to take is the $60,000 Senior Sergeant wants Lisa to pay him, with Mr Hooker threatening her if she does not agree. Lisa's voice has been changed, Mr Hooker's has not. I doubt that the conduct is going to get you anywhere in the High Court proceedings. All that the judge will say is, so he stuffed up, big deal. Where's the loss? Maybe Mr Hooker would enjoy watching this series. Given he is a barrister of over 30 years experience, one would have expected him to have easily identified, as NZ Justice 111 has throughout the series, Lynch's ongoing deceitful and criminal conduct which resulted in huge financial losses to Lisa's trust in favour of Lynch's other client, Senior Sergeant, who Mr Hooker was pushing Lisa to pay another 60000 to after he had defrauded Lisa's trust in excess of $200,000. And now let's hear Mr Hooker's stance when it comes to Senior Sergeant's ongoing perjury in the court, in which Lisa was paying Mr Hooker thousands and thousands of dollars in legal fees to defend herself against that perjury. As we listen to Mr Hooker, 
This will remind ourselves that perjury is a criminal offence. I'm wanting a bit of justice here. I should not have been, no one should be entitled to take away someone's livelihood and act the way they have done. No one should be entitled to perjure themselves as clear perjury in court to gain pecuniary advantage. Surely to God, that's law. Perjury isn't going to get you one dime in terms of that relationship property debt argument. It, it is totally and utterly irrelevant. Not going to get you a dime. And neither... So while he's perjuring himself and I'm going up with huge amounts of thousands of dollars worth of legal fees, it's not worth anything. When he's actually when he's actually misled the court. And I'm having to try and defend myself and say, well, no, he is perjuring himself, he is lying. And carrying on with those lies and it continues to increase my legal bills because of it. There's no claim against that then. No, there's no claim against that. So there we have it. Barrister Hooker's legal position on Senior Sergeant's ongoing perjury in the court against Hooker's own client, Lisa. And did any of our viewers pick up on something very significant that Mr Hooker said regarding what type of debt his client, Lisa, owed to Senior Sergeant? Let's listen. Relationship property debt. Say that again, Mr Hooker? Relationship property debt. Obviously, Mr Hooker, even after being in law for over 30 years, cannot tell the difference between a civil claim and a relationship property claim. Just in case Mr Hooker still does not know the difference, let's explain it to him, shall we? When a person claims in court that they are owed loans by a trust, this is called a civil claim, Mr Hooker, and not a property relationship claim which has a relationship property debt attached to it. And just in case Mr Hooker still doesn't know about simplistic law, when it comes to agreements, let's explain this to him as well. When two people sign a legal document agreeing not to use the Property Relationships Act against each other, if they ever separate, but then one of them uses the Property Relationships Act against the other when they do separate, this is called a breach of contract, Mr Hooker, and breaches of contract are very legally bad. That said, let's continue. While Mr Hooker was charging Lisa huge legal fees, at the same time pushing her to give a senior sergeant thousands of dollars, Christopher Lynch and senior sergeant were, on the 24th of December 2012, secretly entering into an agreement which would see them again join forces to attack Lisa and Rose and Lisa's trust. Let's go through this agreement together. Lynch agreed to pay senior sergeant $155,000. This payment was made using the deceptive excuse that Lynch had sent Senior Sergeant's bulk of his house sale proceeds to Lisa's Trust in October of 2006, without completing any documents to protect the money. Therefore, Lynch owed Senior Sergeant the money. One only needs to watch Episode 5 to discover why this money, with the full knowledge of Senior Sergeant, was sent to Lisa's Trust without any documents being completed by Lynch. After Senior Sergeant was paid, he then agreed to stop suing Lynch in the High Court, with Senior Sergeant also agreeing to give Lynch his fraudulent loan claim that he had filed in the Family Court in 2009 against Lisa and Rose and Lisa's Trust. In legal terms, this is called assigning litigation rights. And last but by no means least, Senior Sergeant and Lynch agreed to become witnesses for each other in the High Court against Lisa and Rose and the Trust. And who was Lynch's barrister that helped him with the settlement agreement? None other than Peter Wright of Shortland Chambers Auckland, who is on an equal level with Lynch and Senior Sergeant when it comes to corruption, as you will see from now on as we go through this series. This now ends episode 10. Look out for the next episode, which NZ Justice 111 is working on right now and is looking so forward to releasing, which will expose to you, but certainly not limited to, the criminal conduct such as countless acts of perjury committed against Lisa and Rose leading up to and during a 2013 High Court trial. The next episode will also be pulling apart via indisputable evidence a judgment handed down against Lisa and Rose by High Court Judge John Presley, who was a man who has proven himself to be, at the very least, totally incompetent as a judge when it comes to understanding clear factual evidence. Until next time, Keep safe.